Oh, <laughs> that's what that music makes me feel like. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the premiere episode of Amazing Race Now on the Reality Now Network. Uh, I know it's like, that's confusing. So it's something new we're doing this year. The symbol up above Abraham right over there, that little circle, that is our new logo for reality now. Those little circles symbolize shows that we cover. The yellow for Amazing Race, blue for Big Brother, green for Survivor, and kind of the gradient purple for everything else under the sun in between. Um, so that's our new simplistic logo. You are watching this on the Reality Now YouTube channel. It's a separate channel from Survivor mm -hmm. Now. We also have Reality Now on Twitch. Also, our Spotify has switched over from Survivor Now to Reality Now. So everything will be available over there as well. But the show itself, so Reality Now is the network. The show itself is Amazing Race Now. And we are here to cover Amazing Race 35, season 35. It's crazy. Season 35. To, to think we're already at season 35 of the Amazing Race. Granted, it only happens once a year unlike survivor where we get two seasons a year but i am joined today by my wonderful co-analyst abraham and abraham we are here to break down the cast for season 35 of the amazing race let me tell you something there's only one other show that i really 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 amazing race people if you ever hear this i really want to be on and that's amazing race i think it has it has a great backdrop to navigating through different countries working with different teams challenges it's like Survivor on, to me, Survivor on a moving platform because you're moving to some different places. You're trying to work with your teams. So for CBS, if y'all hear me, I'm out there. Abraham is ready to come back on Amazing Race. Yes. And Abraham, would you do it with me? Would you go in the Amazing Race with me? I will bring Randy on there. Now, fans, I don't know if I'll throw Randy off the bridge halfway through the show, but he will get the initial, let's go do it. He'll get that. Yes. But the, the Amazing Race can be a lot of pressure. Amazing Race has broken up people's lives. So I don't know, Randy. We might not be friends yeah. after Amazing Race. I'd be like, we got to sign something before we go. We got to find, we got to be like, okay, I'm going to say a couple of things to you that may be choice words, but give yourself a three month cool off and then we'll be back together again. I you usually, be I, about Amazing Race. I usually don't hold any grudges. So maybe we'll do our um, audition tape whenever we meet up. We usually meet up at least once, if not twice a year for survivor purposes. So maybe when we meet up, Abraham, we'll we'll film our we'll film our audition tape, and maybe they will let us on the show. We could film our audition tape on Streamyard and give them our audition tape. We don't even have we to could wait for straight it. straight straight from the podcast, and I like it. Well, uh, just a few things before we get started, everyone. As you can see, the shirt that I'm wearing it might look recognizable. If it doesn't, head on over to our other page, Survivor Now Podcast, and check out. The cast assessment we did for season 45 of Survivor. Survivor. We filmed that earlier today. That was a two hour podcast. So, Abraham and I have been right back. I mean, Abraham, it's getting to the busy time of year where we really start to, to podcast a lot. So, I'm excited and we're getting back into the swing of things. Don't forget, if you enjoy this video, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. We're trying to grow the subscriptions up for reality now. We would love to get everyone who subscribed to Survivor now over here on reality now and yeah. don't forget to join in to the conversation you can leave us a comment in the interactive live chat so abraham before we get started everybody oh, knows yeah. us as the survivor people we are we are the two survivor guys how long have you been watching what's your amazing race story how long have you been watching oh man i've been watching amazing race probably about 10 years you know because again amazing race is uh I don't know if everybody knows that originally the host for Amazing Race and the host for Survivor were up against each other to see who's going to host what. So he was originally up to host Survivor, but Jeff got Survivor. He got Amazing Race. And now we have the two iconic hosts that have been hosting the series for at least a couple of decades now. So, but I love Amazing Race. I love the team up aspect of it. I love the fact that they travel through different countries. You got to try to navigate. You got to try to figure out stuff. Now, them challenges, they, they can be a little daunting, you know, You can, and you will get hurt on Amazing Race. You know, Survivor, you're going to get hurt anyway. But Amazing Race, you can get hurt on Amazing Race. But I think it puts together the people and the family members and the loved ones and the girlfriends, and it really kind of tests you. So I really enjoy the show. I really enjoy when they start running from the start until they run into the back. 
Man, I used to be so much into the Amazing Race. Oh, yeah. Watch it. It was a tradition. I would watch it. Remember when it used to air on Sunday nights? That was like know, a normal time it slot. I would watch Survivor every Wednesday. I would watch The Amazing Race every single night. Those were my two reality shows that I absolutely loved. And over the years, I have fallen out out of it. I haven't watched the past couple of seasons. I think it's been probably two or three years since the last time I watched The Amazing Race. But I am fully ready to get back into it. it. I used to love it. So I'm definitely not an expert. I'll just put that out there. I'm more of a survivor expert, as you can as you can tell. But I still love The Amazing Race. I still have hosting capabilities. So I'm still going to provide you guys with a great uh, lead podcast here with my friend Abraham. We're gonna we're gonna, gonna cover this season. We're gonna cover the entire season of The Amazing Race. So we're looking forward to it. Now, the difference between the cast assessment that we did for Survivor and the cast assessment that we are going to do here for The Amazing Race is I'm not prepared for this one. Survivor, <laughs> I, I did my research. I picked where everyone was going to finish. I'm sorry, but I, I know the cast. I've seen the cast. I've posted the cast. I know what they look like, but I know nothing about them. So we are going to go through read some of their bios here and Abraham and I will let you know how we think they're going to do. It's a little different too. Cause with survivor, you can say pre-merge post-merge final three, all that amazing race. There's no little middle section. So you just got to say right. um, they're, they're going to be out early. They're going to finish about middle of the race or they're going to win the race or finish second, something like but that. There, and there are alliances in amazing race. It's weird how that works out, how teams get together and they form an alliance. Yeah. Obviously, you want to obviously it's a smart tactic because you want to avoid the double U turn. So that's Makes I mean the, the first thing in amazing race is develop communication and establish a relationship with the other team because that will get you far in amazing race. Now you look, nobody's gonna beat you on the, on day one unless you beat yourself. But again, as you go through those different turns and twist of the game. You're going to want somebody to give you a helping hand and be like, no, 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 it's down that road because you don't waste a bunch of time going no bad direction. We see more teams lose because they went the wrong way and they could have been competitive team, but it was like, no. Nope. Or or they don't know how to drive a stick shift. Oh, you can't read a map. <laughs> I don't, I don't really know I mean, how, you, how you get there, but you can't read a map. Abraham, if we ever go on the show, you have to be the map reader. A map reader, no matter what country is the same, it's a map. It's graded. So you just got to know the grids. I mean, I still- look. I can read maps in multiple I was, countries. I was going to say I still struggle with reading maps. I'm not going to lie, but let's get let's get right into this, Abraham. <laughs> hey, I'm not reading for you. I, I do. I struggle. So let's see the first pair that we have: Jocelyn Chow and Victor Lamari. Jocelyn Chow and Victor Lamari, both 49 years old, 49 years old, are a married couple who work as a grocery store managers in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Jocelyn and Victor met at a school dance in college, and though they've been watching The Amazing Race since before they started a family, their kids were the driving force that encouraged the couple to apply for the show. Abraham, this couple is so cute. Like, they, I'm sorry, I'll say it. They are so cute together. I am so excited to watch these two play. I'm interested to see how they do. Now, obviously, it says here um, they met at a school dance. Sorry, I, I wanted to see if they were dancers for a second. They weren't. They met at a school dance. Obviously, they've been married forever. Um, they have to feel comfortable with each other. They definitely have that chemistry that you're looking for. They're familiar with what the other one can do, what the other one can't do. I'm excited to see how this pair fa- fares on the show. And sorry, I can't get my words out today. Uh, I'm the first thing that I'm thinking just by initial reaction vibes only I'm going the tag with her out. I'm going vibes only. I think Jocelyn and Victor can finish. I'm going to say they're going to surprise some people finish middle of the race. They are on the older side. They're 49 years old each. I think they're going to surprise some people finish middle of the race. Sometimes with the amazing race, people think you have to be young. You have to be fit. You have to be fast. No, there is a there's a wise feature to the amazing race. You can be wiser than your competitors. So they may not be the fastest people because of their age. They may get there a little bit after others, but in terms of reading a map, not using technology to find your way around, you know, 
using your wisdom. And then even when you get to the challenges where some of these younger people might struggle because they don't know how to put a bike together. I wouldn't be shocked if Victor knows how to put a bike together just from experience he's had over the years. So that can play a part in the amazing race, the experience you have in life. So yeah, they might not be as fast, but I think they have a lot of experience and I think they can finish about middle of the race. Yeah. Look, I think they're a solid team. I think one, they're going to have a good time. I think they're going to enjoy the experience, man. I can see Victor out there having a good time, enjoying themselves. But here's the thing about it is they are a little more seasoned and being patient. Mm -hmm. and letting it come to them let the game come to you you know don't get rattled if you don't go the right way the right way don't worry about hey going down the wrong street because here's here's what breaks up most amazing race partners they start arguing with themselves that's usually the downfall let's hope that 49 and marriage and kids and everything else got them a little more like okay we know what our triggers are so i like this couple i think they're going to do very well in season i think they're going to have some fun um in the first half of the race i got them as a solid couple now when it comes down to the last i think going to be the last four or five then we're going to see okay can they can they put it all together but i think they're gonna have a good time and here's the thing about it is you you got to be solid in who you're dealing with on amazing race if you ain't solid with it, it it's not gonna be long we can see it we can see it develop and be like Ooh. We're not we're not trying to cause any divorces here. Ooh, no, we, we ain't trying to do that. I just think they got a solid background, a lot of good positive. I think the patient part of it, being able to navigate through is going to be important. And they, I think this guy got, they got some good traits going into Amazing Race to play the game of Amazing Race. And here's the thing. They're both 49. So they knew they was getting into. This is this is not like some a trick or something. They was like, no, nah, we're just going to try to. No, nah, you know, you're going on Amazing Race. You know, it's physically grueling. You know, it's mentally grueling. And you said, you know what? We're going to give it a shot. Also, Randy, 49 is not that old. Uh, <laughs> I know. I know it's not that old. I'm just trying to prove to people I'm not hating on the older generation. I think these two can Sound surprise like a lot of people. I will also say, I forgot to say this at the very beginning. Uh, there are 26, ca uh, I almost said castaways. I'm used to Survivor. There's 26 contestants, 13 teams of two. So let's go ahead and move on to our next pair. Next up, we have Liam and... Yurimi Heichel. Liam, 23 years old, and Yurimi Heichel, 24, are brothers from Cheyenne, Wyoming, and San Marcos, Texas. Liam is a veteran of the U.S. Navy, represent my brothers in the Navy right now, while Yurami is a U.S. Marine Corps veteran. We've had a, and I quote, we've had a fractured relationship for a long time. What you get to see here is relatively new within the last five years. We've just been putting the pieces back together of a lost relationship that we've once had. Okay. So Abraham, I'm going to go to you first. These are two brothers who kind of went separate ways in life. One went to the Navy, one went to the Marines. I'm someone, I don't come from a military back. I mean, I do. My grandpa was in the military. My brother's in the military. I have military connections, but myself, I have never served. I've never been in the military. You have been in the military. I don't know what bonds can be separated based off if you're in different branches like the Navy and the Marines. Um, but they said it there. This is a relationship that was fractured. They've came back together. They're still putting the pieces back together. They're still figuring stuff out and getting along. And this has been a five year process. And now they're about to go on the amazing race. So Abraham, what can we expect um, I mean, from these well, two brothers, Liam and Yoremi? From the picture, we see two great brothers hanging out. You know, if they can keep that positive vibe going into the game of Survivor, I definitely think these are going to be the top three. I think they're going to work well together. But here's the thing. We should say it for all y'all domino players out there. Pressure bus pipes. The pressure of the game and reverting back to doing or saying or something, like I said, it's still a relationship type game. And in a relationship type game, if you feel the pressure and you can't handle it, you're going to revert back to some things. So I'm hoping we don't see that. The brotherhood of the military is the military. For folks that have been in the military, it's still a brotherhood no matter what service you were in. And it's a great brotherhood. But again, we will we, we will pick fun at each other. We will say the Marine Corps will do more than what the Air Force is going <laughs> to ever do. You know, we also going to say about the Navy too. So, but again, it's still a brotherhood. And a sisterhood for everybody that's in there. But here's the thing. They have to be able to handle the pressure of competing against other teams and the pressure of their own relationships. So I think, but I like the I like the team, uh, not because they're both 23, one is 24, 
I like the the image that they're putting out there. Two strong military veterans, two brothers going out there playing a the game of Survivor. We saw the two brothers from last season. They played Survivor. They had a great game. Uh, the frustration came when the completing different tasks, being selected to say, I'll do the task. And really, you can't complete the task. That's where the frustration came in at. So we're going to see how they handle the pressure. I think they're a good team. I think if they can hold it together, we definitely going to see them in the top three. But it's going to be interesting. I agree, Abraham, a thousand percent with you. Uh, when I first saw this picture, I instantly thought winner picks. They look super in shape. They look physically there. I bet they're really smart. They are young. Yes, they are youthful. I was instantly thinking winner pick. But then I read kind of that bio there and got to thinking about how they can work together as a team. I think they're going to do really well. I'm thinking top five, maybe even top three if they put it all together. I will say if they make the top three, I think they could win the game. But I'm a little bit nervous that, like you said, the growing pressure of going through the motions of the game, dealing with uh, circumstances that come up and the stuff that you have to overcome together, I think it could put a strain back on that relationship that is still trying to mend itself. And I think we might get to a point where it just becomes a little bit too much. And I, I could see like a beautiful moment where Phil says, what did you get out of this journey? And they're both tearing up saying, you know, just running it with my brother, you know, this means the world to us. I can, I can see that happening. So for now I'm going to say top five, <laughs> five fourth <laughs> or fifth place. I don't think they, because it's a relationship, you need so much chemistry, you need understanding and you have to work together. And since this is a relationship that is still kind of being built back up, I'm a little nervous for that. You know, after the end, when he says that, what have you learned? You're like, this is the end of your race. So <laughs> you really don't want that speech. It's a great speech. You just don't want to have that speech. So at the end of the day, we're going to see. Like I said, you know, the amazing race is not all physical. Mm -mm, it's no. not. So you got to be able to navigate. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see how you operate outside of the U.S., they, they don't run the, US, the, the the amazing race in the U.S. It would be way too easy. So it's going to be amazing how you operate outside when they put you in a different environment. It didn't say anything about they had lived abroad or been somewhere else and encountered different cultures and stuff. They, so They've had to have traveled if they're in the military. I'm sure they've traveled yeah. a little bit. No? There's plenty of people in the military never traveled anywhere. No. I know people that have been in the military 20 years in the same state. I'm like, you didn't go anywhere. Oh, man, but, that would suck. I will give a shout out for San Marcos, Texas, because it's only like 45 minutes from the house in Cheyenne, yeah. Wyoming, uh, because they got that outdoor experience because Brad is from uh, Wyoming. So they do have a background to say they can you know, navigate. So it's going to be interesting to see if they can they can navigate each other and how they do once they get out of the comfort of the U.S. But I do like no, the team. It's definitely going to be a team to watch. Like so far, this cast looks fantastic. We're going to love a lot of these teams. Uh, but let's move on to our next pair Andrea Simpson and Milani Hatcher. Andrea Simpson, 44 years old, and Milani Hatcher, 45, are best friends from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Milani works as a tax examiner technician, while Andrea is a director of credit management. Milani and Andrea met in college and have been best friends ever since. And I quote, We don't want we don't want to be the main, the mean team. Sorry. <laughs> We're not going to be the mean team because we're not mean people. I think we're just vibrant spirits. Okay, I got to say something, and I have to apologize. I thought this was a mother-daughter duo. Oh, no. They're best friends. They're the same age. I just thought it was mother-daughter duo. <laughs> You know what? That's a, uh, when, those, when those young ladies meet you in person, Randy, they're going to be like, this is truly a compliment. One of them is going to say it's a compliment. The other one will be like, what you talking about, Randy? I'm not going to specify which one's which. I'm smarter than that. But you see what I mean, Abraham. But anyways, best friends, I can connect to this because I've been trying to get on The Amazing Race with my best friend, Christian. I've known him since fourth grade. Um, so, you know, best friends can work well together. They don't have that kind of love connection that you know, the couples have where it can kind of the pressure just builds even more. They can kind of go out there and have a fun time running this race as friends. On the flip side of that, it might be the other side of the coin where it's because they're friends, they're not as close as they could be. They're not in an actual like relationship relationship. So that can kind of cause some more arguments. We know Look. friends fight all the time. So, I, I mean, point is everyone fights, brothers, sisters, friends. It just depends on will they be will they be able to overcome the drama that is going to be presented to them. 
I think this team, until I see a team that changes my mind, is going to be the first out. Again, I disagree with Randy because that's how we do it. Let me let me write let me write down Randy's response first. First out. I think this team's going to be first out. So when I come back to it, I'll be like, Randy said it. It's it's yeah. between this and another team. I'm kind of torn. No, I, I think they're going to do really well. Here's the thing about it is, I think they're going to come at the game methodically. Even in their bio, they're, they're saying they're going to make sure they read and follow all the instructions properly. A lot of times people get tripped up because they just don't read everything. They're such in a hurry to get out there and get it done. You just got to beat the last team. Amazing Race is kind of interesting in that sense. When it's a bigger group of racers, you're just trying to beat the last team. If, if you know you can't beat the first team, you got to figure out who can you who can you beat. I think they're going to be more methodical in how they play the game. I'm just looking to see can they can they pace themselves to get to the end of the race? Can you pace yourself through all the challenges and be able to handle all the stresses and doing the different type of challenges and get to the end? Because it, as much as it's an amazing race and you're trying to get it done, you still got to pace yourself. So I think they're going to do very well. I think they're going to at least make it down to the least of top six teams. I'm going to put them in the top six place. Um, okay, so about halfway. That's about halfway. Yeah, halfway. There's, there's 13 teams, yeah. So I, I definitely think they're going to be in the top six, I think, because they're going to be following the same, you know, basically the same guideline. We, we know what to look for. We know what we want to get done. We know we're going to follow instructions and things of that nature. But it's always those X factors of what you don't know. Can they read a map? How well can they, can they establish themselves in an environment they're unfamiliar with? Can you navigate a different country? I think if they can get past those little things, I think they're going to do very well. I just need to know, can you go from a grueling start to a grueling finish? Can you pace yourself enough to be able to have enough in the tank to get to the end? But I like the team. I think it's a solid team. I'm not going to put them out at first. I think they're going to get to the middle. I, I hope they prove me wrong. I really do. I never want to wish first out on anybody. And I hope they prove, prove me wrong and they kind of lean more towards your prediction. So the next team that we have up, uh, Joe Moskowitz and Ian Todd. Joe Moskowitz, 35 years old, and Ian Todd, 40, are a recently engaged couple from New York City. Joe is the head of business development for a commercial real estate tech platform, while Ian Todd is a senior director of new business for a marketing tech startup. And I quote, we both worked out in the same gym during lunch, and so, like, there weren't a ton of people there, Ian said in a preview. Continuing the quote, after throwing eyes at each other for months, I got up I got up the courage and introduced myself to Joe. All right, Abraham, we have a freshly new, a freshly engaged couple here. So in terms of like relationships and the spectrum of chemistry, is this going to be something that they excel at or is the amazing race, the pressure of it going to tear them apart? Hey, first of all, hey, love the energy from the two of them. Love the energy. I think they're going to have another great time. Problem is they're couples. They're, they're, they're new couples. And again, Amazing Race is a pressure cooker. And you know what? If you want to see how much you can push somebody, take them on the Amazing Race. That's, <laughs> a, good, that's a good, go that's a good honeymoon. That's a good honeymoon. <laughs> it, it's, it's a lot of pressure. I like the I like the team. I think they're going to be a great team. But I got to always look back at, can you handle that pressure? And I'm looking at it. It's like, okay, yeah, we easy going. I wish I could. Uh, yeah, that's great and all. But Amazing Race is not easy going. Amazing Race is pressure off the jump. You start off running. They be like, where you going? No, we got to run. We got to get to the car. And you find out who your partner really is or what they can really do once you put there and say, okay, here's a task in front of you. I think they're going to be all new couples. I I'm going to put him. I'm, I'm going to put them both. This particular team here, and it's going to probably be for all my teams that are couples that are new, you're going in the first half of being put off Amazing Race mm -hmm. because you really find out what's going on between you and your other yeah. mate in these situations. I, but I think they're going to – I think uh, – I want to say they're going to do good, but it's going to be a lot of pressure. So um, – and in New York, man, if they walk in slow – if this is another – we hate slow walkers thing about New Yorkers. I don't know what's going on with that, but everybody on Survivor thinks that we hate slow walkers from New York. I think their background in commercial development, real estate, things of that nature, I think that's going to help them in navigating different landscapes. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to be concerned about these relationships because you're going to have to put some pressure that you normally would never put on somebody and you're on an amazing race. So we're going to see if they handle the pressure in the first couple of challenges, 
they're a solid team. If not, let me go and put them down here for top five elimination. Ooh, Abraham, I think they're top three. I think they make the finale. I think they're going to be a strong team. I think they're intelligent. They're obviously strong. I think uh, they're kind of in that budding new romance, which is nothing can go wrong. New romance as they just got engaged. And I think they're going to work really well together. I really like this team and I'm excited to see them play the game. Um, I honestly could see them winning. It's very tough for me not to say they're my winner pick. They would be if one other team didn't exist. There's a team coming up that I am so excited to watch. And there's just something about them that's screaming winners. Uh, but I think these two could win. But for now, I'm going to put them in my top three, maybe second place. I, I got my, I got my winner pick team. So, okay. Okay, Randy. I see what you're trying to do. Yeah. They're not they're not my winners, but they were very close to being my winners. Uh, so next up, we have Steve Cargyle and Anna Lee Wilson. Steve Cargyle, 54, and Anna Lee Wilson, 28, are a father-daughter duo from Petty, Texas, and, and Roy's City, Texas. Cargyle is a paint contractor while Wilson works as a speech uh, pathologist, private flight attendant, and influencer. Yeah, there's three different jobs there uh, for Anna. So, all right, Abraham, this is a uh, – what are you laughing at? You know, because we can see – like, I can read it. I'm looking over here. They pop each other up. <laughs> um, father-daughter teams always win to me. I love father-daughter teams. Daughter teams. I, I cannot speak of that. Fa yeah, father, daughter. I love father and daughter teams. And I think this is a really fun one. I could see him being one of the, like, America's favorite on the show. I could see him being a super fun, loving guy. His daughter seems really sweet. I think they're going to work really well together. I could see him helping his daughter, guide her through some of the roadblocks. You know, do as much as you can because, obviously, roadblocks, you can, sometimes you can't help with anything. But I could see him being there for his daughter if she tends to get a little bit emotional. We see emotions come out during the race. So I could just see him being kind of the foundation that supports her throughout this entire journey. It's going to be one thing about father-daughter and mother-daughter or mother-son experiences is they treat it like they almost treat the amazing race where couples are treating it like a competition. Friends are treating it like a competition. Yes, they are competing, but I feel like those parent kid duos are treating it more like, look, this is a chance for us to do something, a once in a lifetime experience that we will never forget. It's more of a bonding thing for them. And they are going to bond on this trip. This is going to be something that she remembers doing with her father the rest of their lives. And I think there's always a beautiful element that comes with that. Um, I'm hoping this team goes far. And for that reason, I'm going to say they finish about middle of the race, about that fifth, sixth spot. I really hope this team goes far because they seem like they're going to be a, a fun time. I'm a little bit worried about the older man getting around. If he's got them knees, if he's got some knee issues, I'm a little worried about that, Abraham, but I where, hope where they make it these, pretty far. Where do you get these knee issues from? Everybody that's 50 does not have a knee issue. <laughs> I'm not why. saying everyone. I've never said you have a knee issue, but it's. That's because I it, still play basketball. I bet you if I ask that man if he has a knee or a back issue, he says one or the other. He's a speech pathologist. He wasn't out there running, jumping, and skipping. <laughs> look, I think that, look, for all the daughters team, she had 28 years, or we'll say 20 years to figure out her daddy. And she's not going to come on TV. No, nah, because we've seen father daughters collapse too. So I can't really say that. Let's rephrase that. Here's the thing about it is, I think they're going to be a great team. I think they're going to go and they're going to work together well because they know their strengths and weaknesses. Because he knows he's going to know her. And even the team that we had previously where it was a father, daughter, the father knew his daughter and he thought he could push her through. And that's the, that's the difference between that. You think you can take your kid to another level. And he did. They still ended up losing the next challenge. They didn't lose that challenge, but they ended up losing the next challenge. And I think we got to I think it's going to depend on their team dynamics. I like this team. I'm going to put them middle middle of the road. They definitely make it into the middle because I think they're going to they're going to feed off each other. Him with a background of speech pathologist, her with a background, because he was not. I'm pretty sure he's the, not. The, the speech could the speech could yeah. help him out. Like I, I'm not saying obviously I'm not saying mm -hmm. he he knows all the languages, but you can kind of his job is correct me if I'm wrong. His job is literally to to help speech. people like speak, which I yeah. went through nine years of that because I couldn't say my R's. My name's Randy when I was growing up as Wandy. 
because I couldn't say ours. It still happens today, which is why I said father, daughter, or something like that. Like I had trouble getting that out because I still have a speech impediment with my R's. So sometimes I have to slow down and genu genuinely I'm a fast speaker. So sometimes I have to slow down to make sure I get my R's out. Um, so him being a speech pathologist could really help him out, could help him out. As you can tell, I'm really struggling now. Uh, anyways, it could help him out because he can kind of guide um, the conversation when they're trying to understand someone who might not speak the best English. Yes, he might not understand completely what they're saying, but he's got those techniques to try to kind of guide them to, you know, tell me, sign to me what you're saying. I wouldn't be shocked if he can sign. I wouldn't you know be what? shocked. So I think it could help him in the in the race. This is like I said, this is a solid team. Again, do they have the stamina? I'm not calling anybody old like Randy likes to do it. If, do they have the stamina for the entire amazing race? I say they're going to do very well. I say we won't see how far they can really go into the amazing race until we get to the middle part. But I definitely think they're going to make it to one of the middle teams. I just think they're going to work together. Here's another thing. I think they're going to they're going to team up with another team. I think that's what's going to happen. And I first think time mentioning an alliance. Yeah, yeah, first time. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's going to be an alliance in that one right there. And then their dad. I think they're going to have a good time. And here's the thing about it is for all the daughters, uh, mothers, sons, whatever the combination of, of, of parent and child. They always look to have a good time. You know, if my mom was on Amazing Race, oh, man, we'd be having a good time. Oh, we'd be up in there. Hey, you'd be like, what they doing in the back? Oh, we having a good time. I don't know what your other cats weren't about. Yo, we on Amazing Race together. So I think they're going to have a good time. We're going to see a lot of fun out of that, that particular duo right there. I can't, oh, wait. I can't wait for Amazing Race to come on. I'm so excited, Abraham. By the way, we're going to take this opportunity as we're about to get halfway in our cast assessment. Uh, to let you guys know kind of what we're looking at coverage wise, Abraham and I haven't actually sat down and picked out a time yet of when we are going to do our podcast. Uh, obviously the amazing race. We didn't mention this either, Abraham, an hour and a half long episodes this year for the amazing race as well. They came, they come on right after survivor. So what our schedule is going to look like Wednesday night, we'll watch survivor. Mm -hmm. I can't speak for Abraham, but I assume right after Survivor, we'll watch The Amazing Race. And then we'll do the Survivor podcast after The Amazing Race, which means there is no time to do The Amazing Race podcast Wednesday <laughs> night. There's no the time. Next, first of all, it's Thursday. It's going to be Thursday. Because look, it's already, by the time they go off, yeah. we do the podcast, it's Thursday. So. Yeah, it's, it's it's early Thursday morning for people on the on the East Coast. It's Wednesday night for people on the West Coast. Um, but so we are not doing the amazing race podcast at 3 AM in the morning. Um, we, we got to test out the survivor podcast first to see if we don't get too tired doing that. Uh, I was thinking possibly Friday nights. I don't know if that works for you, Abraham. I'm in it Friday nights. Yeah. So I possibly thinking Friday nights, we will let you guys know, make sure to follow reality now on Instagram. It's, uh, the handle is at now. This is reality. Uh, make sure to follow us there and we will get you guys the information on when the podcast will air where we cover the amazing race. So next up, let's get to our next team. Uh, we got Morgan and Lena Franklin, Morgan, 31 years old and Lena Franklin, 29 are sisters from New York and Los Angeles. Wow. One from New York, one from Los Angeles. They've got the entire country covered. Both sisters work as marketing executives in a preview, Lena revealed she once watched 27 seasons of The Amazing Race in two months. It's a lot of homework. That is a shit ton of homework. It's a lot of homework. I don't really know what to. They still they buy coastal too. One stays on one coast, one stays on the other. Coast. I don't. I don't like sister teams. Not as much as I love brother teams. I think sisters can bicker and get on each other's nerves just a little bit more than brothers can. Um, I think this team's going to be one of the first three or four out. I'm worried that they're, they're going to get into it. The drama of the race is going to make them emotional where you have the father daughter. You have the father daughter pairing where if the daughter gets emotional, the dad is there to support her. Who's going to support the other in this situation? It could just turn into a screaming match. It could. I don't know them. They could get along. I'm going solely based off picture and the description of them. So uh, I'm interested to see how they do, but I think they are going to be one of the early boots this season. 
I, I might have to disagree. I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna ch- get a chance to see. Everybody has a chance on Survivor. It's it's just it's temperament. It, it's can I adapt to this situation? You know, um, it's interesting that they both. One lives in California. One lives in uh, New York, and they're both marketing executives. Same field, two different coasts. So it's interesting that they they they, they share that together. I think we're gonna see a team that does good up front but i'm concerned about do they have enough to get to the end i think they're going to start out pretty strong here's the thing about it is they bring two different perspectives to the game there's a difference between living in la and there's a different living in brooklyn like like ted would say the day uh this morning you ain't walking away in la well in brooklyn you're walking everywhere i mean new york you can walk take the train you ain't gotta you ain't gotta really yeah you don't you don't use a car in new york no so it's interesting to see. I'm going to say they're going to do pretty well up front, but I don't know if they have the stamina to get through the whole race. And that's going to be where it comes down to where, you know, do you really want to eat the cheese that got worms in it? And I like to refer back to the two twins that played. Um, I don't want to miss Lulu and Lala. I think it is Lulu and Lala, the two twins that played from New York City. But when she had to eat that cheese with the worms in it, it was like, oh, do I? I don't know if I can do this. You know, it's different between eating some cheese that you don't see anything moving to eating some cheese that you see something moving. So do you have the stamina when it comes to the different diversity of the challenges? So I think they're going to get off to a good start, but I'm kind of curious to see how they do and maintain that. So I'm not going to say they're getting voted out. Would you say second, third? Uh, no, I, I said third or fourth. I'm not going to put them third or fourth. I'm going to put a middle. I'm going to put a middle of the pack, eighth or ninth. We'll see. Okay. Okay, you've got a lot of middle of the packs, Abraham. I'm just letting you know that right now. You've got a lot of middle of the pack. Somebody going to have to get ordered out first. Let me see here. It might be this couple right here. Hold on a second. Next up, we got Todd and Ashley Martin. Todd, Todd and Ashley Martin, both 38 years old, are a married couple from Chino, California. Todd works as a special education teacher, while Ashley is a hospitality hospitality account manager. The couple met at age 15. Wow. So they've been together now 23 years. Abraham, can they make it? You're a married man. I'm not a married man. <laughs> I think I think married couples do very well for the most part on the show. He's my winner, Pete. Ooh, I like it. I like it because I have them top three. I think they're going to finish top three. Let me tell you something. Uh, they're, they're, with the, they're with the other couple, the two guys from New York. And them, and then my winner pick that comes a little bit later. I think they finish second. Here's the thing. I mean, after that, you already know how you argue. <laughs> you already know the mannerisms. You already know the eyes. You already know be like, tell you to stop talking, stop talking. <laughs> I mean, you know each other, and that's what it comes down to. Do you know each other? But they got a good background too. Hospitality account manager, special education teacher. So you you used to working with different types of people. So that's always instrumental in communication and survivor. Can you communicate with different types of people? So they got a background and ability to communicate. Um, I don't really take much when it compares itself to other teams because what makes those teams is not necessarily what's going to make your team. You may see some different similarities to those teams and think, oh, yeah, we got those same similarities. What you don't have is a pressure cooker called Amazing Race on top of you. They got Amazing Race sitting on top of them. And you think you may act a certain way. But in actuality, until you get into the amazing race and feels what it looks like, but I also say they're going to team up with somebody. Now I, I, I could see, see that I can see that with the father daughter. I could see them teaming up and be like, "Hey, let's team up to work together and let's let's battle it out for the final positions one and two or three and four or whatever." So I, I like this team again. My winner pick. I think they're going to do pretty well. You feel confident in that, Abraham? Saying they're all, your winner pick all day long. Look. <laughs> He got on a, a dry fit shirt. So he said, I'm ready to get out here and get to work. And he like, he'll jump in the river full of alligators and save her life. So yes, my winner pick. I think he is going to be a beast at challenges. I think she could surprise a lot of people at challenges. I think they're going to make it really far in this game together. I think they will uh, bounce off each other well throughout the entire game. Uh, I think he'll be there to support her. She'll be there to support him. And I, I think this is a team that can do everything. And usually we see at least one pair make it to the very end. I could see this being the pair. Like, I think they're going to excel at this competition. So let's get on to our next duo here. 
but we'll we see. have <laughs> Ro- <laughs> Robin Tomic and Chelsea Day. Robin Tomic and Chelsea Day, both 41 years old, are best friends from Kirkland, Washington, and Shoreline, Washington. Both women are stay at home moms. The duo met in junior high. Chelsea said that Rob- Robin was her seventh grade bully in a preview and eventually became friends. Robin said that Chelsea helped her through the death of her husband who died of leukemia. So first off, um, sorry, Robin, for the loss of your husband. I do. Um, I feel for you and I'm sorry about that. Yeah, it was Robin said that Chelsea helped her get through it. Um, I'm a little worried for this team, Abraham, mostly because, you know, obviously they're both in their forties. Now it's 41. Obviously I'm not saying they're old Abraham. I'm saying they've known each other. They've had this friendship for a minute, but it always worries me that one of them was bullying the other person. At one point in their lives, they're forty-one. They got bullied at twelve. What, what are we talking about here, guy? And they friend, best friends. I was gonna say they <laughs> might they they, they they probably get over it. They're well over it. Um, I don't know what to expect about this team. This was the other team earlier when I said the other best friends were gonna be the first ones out. I thought about saying these two are gonna be the first ones out, but um, I think I think they're gonna be one of the first out. Probably one of the first four out. I think they're gonna have fun. I think I think they're gonna have we're gonna be one of the few teams that truly just have a good time. Now, saying that, let's place them. I think they're gonna find some difficulty as they start the game. Because here's the thing about it is nothing against stay-at-home parents, not at all. But you're about to be outside. You're about to be doing some things. You gotta do let, a lot of things, yeah. Yeah. Nothing about staying at home. Nothing about it. Because it's a bunch of people that stay at home. They can do anything they want to do. But again, you're going to be put in situations that normally you do not find yourself in. I think they're going to have a great time. I think they're going to enjoy the experience. But I think they're going to get that speech early on. What did y'all learn? (laughs) I think that's going to be early on. Not not, not later, early on. Are you saying first out or these are not your first out? They're going to be in the top three or four. They, they're not first. Okay, out. we agree. Abraham, we agree for once. We're going to top three, three, five. We'll put top three, I know. Five. I know Robin and Chelsea don't want to hear that we agree, but we agree for once. So moving on to our next duo, we have Greg <laughs> and John Franklin. Greg, 25 years old, and John Franklin, 27, are brothers from New York and Mountain View, California, uh, much like the sisters, one in New York, one in L.A. This is um, my coastal thing. What? What'd you say? I mean, what's up with the bi-coastal? Either California or New York these days. I don't know. It's like siblings split up and they want to split up so much. One goes to one side of the country. The other goes to the other. Uh, Greg is a software developer and John is a product manager. The Franklins have always loved to travel together. And I quote, we've been to Montreal together. We've been to uh, Thailand together. We've been to Singapore, China, just all over the world together. So this is just a concentrated way to do it the brothers are also still some the brothers also still sometimes share a bunk bed when they're visiting home that is sweet i'm gonna pull a fast one no i'm not no i'm gonna stick with my gut who i thought was gonna be winner pick these guys are gonna do good these guys are gonna finish top five i think it's obvious they've traveled the world together they obviously get along very 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 well if they go home and still share a bunk bed. You think I'm going to share a bunk bed with my brother? Absolutely not. That would never happen. So I I I think these two they've traveled the world already Abraham. That's going to help them out. I think they're going to do really well. You know what? I like the brothers. I like the brothers. Yeah. They're going to get out there. They're going they're going to put the work in. They're going to put the work in and I think they're going to have a good time. Um, you know, I'm always affinity for the IT folks. I like to get the IT shout out, IT shout out. Um, I think they're going to get out there. They're going to have a good time. I really enjoyed the seeing the two brothers that played last season. Uh, they work well together. I think it's just going to come down to, I definitely think they're going to be in the top three. They're going to be in the top three of the racers. And I think they're going to be competitive all the way through, but they're going to need an alliance somewhere. And I just hope they pick the right alliance to get through those different navigation things. And looking at a man, both of them got big smiles on their face. It looked like they like, look, we about to have a good time. And that's going to really be a part of the amazing race is your attitude. Can you stay positive through the amazing race? I'm not going to, I say physically, they look like they're going to do all right physically, but every challenge in amazing race is not about physicality. 
Some of it's about can I remember some things and can I recall some things? So I like the fact that physicality can be taken out of the game of Amazing Race and can be put back in. But I like this team. So I definitely think they're going to finish in the top three. I think they're going to have a good time doing it. Great relationship on paper. Let's see if it translates to the actual race itself. I could see these two being one of my favorite teams. Like I'm excited to watch them play. I think they're going to kill it in some of the challenges that they encounter along the way on, on the race or in the race. Sorry. So I, I, I'm very excited to watch this team. Abraham, we just have a few more. Here's uh, our next team, Rob and Corey MacArthur, Rob 48 years old and Corey MacArthur 25 are a father and son duo from Riverside, California and New York city. Once again, New York and California. It is so weird. Uh, Rob works as a teaching assistant and assistant football coach, while Corey is a senior manager of client strategy and analytics. And I quote, this comes from Corey. My dad has really inspired me to always live putting my values first in pretty much everything that I do. And there's a unique twist on it with my dad being deaf. So we can show the world, you know, deaf people can raise their children and have a really intimate relationship with them. So I did see this. I saw them in a in a quick little preview and I saw him signing to his to his dad. So I assumed his dad was deaf. I think this is overall going to be a good experience. I think more than a competition, this is going to be something that they enjoy and they remember forever. And I think they're one of the few teams who I don't think they're going out. They obviously want the money, but I don't think that's their main priority. I think their main priority is let's do this together and let's raise awareness and show people just because you're deaf doesn't mean you're going to struggle. So I think they're going to make it a couple legs in. I do have them being the second or the third team out. Um, I do think his his dad's language barrier is going to affect him just a little bit. Um, th- I think that's where the son's going to come in, but I could see them struggling because of that. And so for that reason, I think this is going to be more of a beautiful journey than a a tough competition for them. I think they're just going to enjoy it and remember the time they have on the show. No. I think they're gonna be. I think I think they're gonna they're gonna be them dogs. <laughs> I think really? they're gonna come in there to play. Here's the thing about it is they can already overcome a bunch of other stuff. Not being able to hear is not gonna hurt them in the sense that I think their communication with themselves is already gonna be solid. But again, communicating with others, communication is gonna is a key to survivor. Can you communicate with others? Now you're taking out the fact that his dad, I'm pretty sure, can read lips. His so, dad's got to be able to read lips because his dad yeah. is a teaching assistant and an assistant football coach. Yeah, so he's adaptable. He can get in there and get the work done. So I know. I, I, I think they're going to get into the – if they get through the middle pack of Survivor, if they reach and get through the middle pack of Survivor, they definitely can make it to the top five. I think they're going to be a solid team. I'm looking forward to seeing them one. You're right. They're going to have a good time. You got your you got your dad playing. You're playing. Your dad is deaf, but that's not been a, something that you had to worry about as a challenge. I mean, you overcame that challenge. You moved on. So I'm looking forward to see how somebody that is deaf plays the game of Survivor. What do they change the concept of Survivor? I mean, Survivor, I'm sorry. Amazing race. So I'm looking forward to seeing them. One, yeah, you're right. I think they're going to thoroughly enjoy the experience and the time spent together. But they came to place the amazing race. And we're about to see a team come in there and have some fun and play. I wouldn't sleep on this team. Don't sleep on them. I, I mean, think one of those top five teams. Let me write it if down. You, if you look, if you look at the picture alone, you can tell that these two genuinely love each other and they enjoy each other's company. You can just see it with a smile on their faces, especially with how Corey puts his arm around his dad. You can see how much that man means to him. How that man is his inspiration. Um, so I think. At the bare minimum, they are going to have an incredible journey. Man, would it be cool to watch them go on the amazing race and get far? Like, that'd be yeah. so sweet to watch. They have a really nice story. I'd like to re- remind uh, them that Randy put y'all out early. Let's go on. Yeah, I'm sorry. I got someone's got to do it. Randy, All right. daddy, cool I'm putting you out the game. Our, our next team, Joel Strasser and Garrett Smith. Joel Stra- Strasser, 42, and Garrett Smith, 43 are best friends from Kuna, Idaho, and Meridian, Idaho. 
Joel is an auto claims training specialist, while Garrett is a delivery driver. The duo met while serving in the military 22 years ago. Abraham, this is my winner team. This team what? is going all the way. They've got that. They they've got the dogs in them. They've got that military training. They're going to no. be ready to go. They're used to putting in the work all day, every day. 22 years. They met 22 years ago in military training. They've got that chemistry. They look like fun guys. I think they're going to be having the time of their life uh, from Idaho. I think these two are going to be like two guys that when they jump off like a, a cliff in the water or something or skydive, you're just going to hear them go, yeah, like I just see them having where everyone else is stressing. I think this team is going to have a lot of fun in the race. This team is, it's what my gut is telling me. Maybe I'm better at picking amazing race winners than I am picking survivor winners. I think this team is going all the way, Abraham. Uh, I'm going to go with, uh, <laughs> look, it all depends on what they got left in the tank. <laughs> oh, now you're making the old guy joke. No, I said what they got left in the tank. I ain't say what they, how far they, the tank would go. I said it all depends on what they got left in the tank. Listen, look, this is going to push them harder than they've been pushed before. They, they, here's the thing about used to be in the military. We, I used to be in the military, <laughs> you know, so I'm going to go with the same thing I've always said. If you got the stamina to get you through the middle part of Survivor, the middle part of Amazing Race, you got a chance to win. And I'm just concerned that those first two or three weeks, it wears your body down, especially if you don't come in some type of preparation. Who do we have? I think we had a season where somebody had blisters on their foot. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And they're like, I, I'm done. I, I, I can't push myself anymore. Because, again, you, you got to be able to push yourself on, survive, on an amazing race. And this is going to be interesting for your winter pick. I'm going to give them middle of the road. I'm not going to say they're going to be every, moving You first. give every team middle of the road. No, no. I see that you'll make it past. You're not. I'm going to give them, they're going to, hold on, let me find, they're going to make it past the middle road. But again, it's going to come down to, do they have enough in the tank to, to be able to say, this is different, let me tell you something. No matter what the show is, it's a difference between playing on your couch and playing in the real time. It's going to be interesting how they do in the real time. So I'm going to say they're going to, they're going to make it to the middle. And now, you know what? I'm gonna put them. They're gonna make it pad. They're gonna make it top one to one to four before they get put out. One to four, and then they out. Okay. One to, one to four. Well, I I can't wait one until they. I can't wait until they prove you wrong and they win the entire competition. Next I hope up, you do a better winner pick than you do on Survivor because all Randy's winner picks on Survivor have either been eliminated pre-merge or soon after. Hey, there's no merge here. There's no merge. So yeah, the the there's, luck is alliance. There's alliances. The luck is going to turn around in my favor. So next up, we have Elizabeth and Liana Riviera, or, or Rivera. Elizabeth, 52, and Liana Rivera, 27, are a mother-daughter team from Tampa, Florida. Elizabeth is a retired lieutenant, while Liana works as both a therapist and an event planner. And I quote, we need those million dollars, so I don't need to work eight jobs anymore because I'm tired of it. Quite frankly, Liana joked in a preview. She's working eight jobs, Abraham. Nobody works eight jobs. Um, that's a lot of jobs. <laughs> We're going to put that in work smarter, not harder category of life. Uh, oh, man. You know, I hate to do this. I hate to do it. I hate to be the one. They're going to have fun. Let's, let's stick with that one. That's always my comeback. They're going to have a great experience with each other on this adventure, but it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt a lot. When you get out there and you got to start doing things and moving around and, and it's going to hurt. It's going to be, it's a few of these teams that's going to realize this is not the chair. This is actually being on survive. I mean, being on amazing race and they're going to have to, they're going to have to figure it out. I'm going to give them the top one to five to figure it out. I'm not going to put them out. I'm going to say they got the top one to five to figure out how to run amazing race and win. That is the only way eight, eight jobs that you ain't sleeping much. I think this is a, a middle of the road team. I think they're going to finish somewhere in that third out to seventh out area. 
Um, I think the drama of the race could get to him. I could see a lot of mother and daughter arguing and fighting on the race. So uh, we got to wait and see how they do. But I do think this is a team. Uh, obviously, she's got a lot to her. The fact that she's an event planner, she's working so many jobs. Her mom being a former lieutenant, I think that can help a lot in terms of, you know, navigating the streets, trying to find your way to your next location. Uh, I think just kind of help guide her daughter through tough situations, I think is going to help this team out a lot. Um, so I don't know. I'm going to be a little nicer, Abraham. I think this team could finish about middle of the pack. I got you down. I got you down. It's, like I said, Survivor. Survivor. Amazing race is interesting. Amazing race. You you got a lot of things, moving parts, a lot of things going on, and you got a lot of challenges that's going to say, hey, can you do this? You know, uh, the different the eating different types of food and the different type of challenges. It, it, it's a it's a wear and tear. So I'm just, I'm just interested. In, who's going to be the first one to say, no, nah, I can't do it? <laughs> and be like, no. Nah. Uh, I think the daughter. I'm going to guess the daughter. <laughs> be like, nah, I can't do that. And that's what we're looking for. Who looks like they'll be like, nah. And, and again, can always prove us wrong. These are just our our cast assessments on how we look at you and what information we have on you. But you could be like. No, no. I want you to win because eight jobs is too many. That's what I want you to win for. Because they, they, you know, don't need eight jobs. Just let's get one. Yeah, you do not. I I agree. Uh, finally, our final team: Al Alexandra and Sheridan liked her. Alexandra thirty four and Sheridan liked her twenty nine. Are a sister brother duo from Chicago. Both siblings Chicago. work as consultants. Alexandra and uh. How do I say that name? Sheridan do everything together. They share an apartment, work at the same business, and are now amazing race partners. Okay, this is something that can be tough. If you are together all the time, it can become a little stressful. So these two work together. They um, share an apartment. So they share an apartment. They work together. And now they're doing the amazing race. This isn't a, a couple. This is a brother and sister duo. We know how brother and brothers are. We know how sisters and sisters are. Same thing here. We know how siblings are in general. But I think this is a sibling duo who can go far. I'm going to give them top six. Oh, I, think I, think I think they look intelligent. I think they look like they can hold their own if, if it gets physical. Um, I could see them being a little dirty. We haven't really talked about that. I could see them U-turning someone. I could see it. So I, I think they're going to go pretty far in this game. Um. Look, look, they already a team. <laughs> I mean, look, I'm like, okay, no, well, they already a team. So at least they had that going into it that they are they're 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 already a sibling strong team. So for the siblings, for all the siblings coming in there in the game of Survivor, the game of Amazing Race, we're going to figure this Man, out, guys. We're I'm going to have to take a shot every time you say Survivor. Yeah. We're going to have to look. We're trying to put the podcast back to back. For all the siblings playing, I think it's going to be a competition with the siblings of Amazing Race this season. We have some strong sibling teams playing Amazing Race this season. It's going to be interesting to see them ballot out to see who's going to be supreme. So I'm not going to take anything from any of the sibling teams. I think they're, they're great matchups. Do I think they can beat one of the other teams? That is what we want to see on Amazing Race. Can you beat one of these other strong sibling teams? If not, you're down to like number five on Amazing Race because we already got three or four strong sibling teams out there. So if you can't beat one of them, we ain't going to worry about you. We ain't going to see much of you. I think it's a great connection, but I think out of all the siblings we have, they have the best connection mm -hmm. because they continue to move in life and stay together where the other ones have gone and they work in different parts of the world and live different parts of each from each other. But this sibling team here is going to be pretty strong. So I'm interested to see how they perform under pressure. That's really what it comes down to. I think their job is going to be a compliment, ability to communicate. But it's going to be pretty interesting to see which of the sibling teams of this season. What do we have? One, two. Should be a four three. or five, I believe. Three. So we have three, three? siblings. Oh, teams. only three. Okay. It's going to be interesting to see how they rack and stack against each other. And you can't say you're younger because everybody, all the sibling teams are around the same age. We're going to see how that all works out. I think they came together with a great cast for this season of Amazing Race. 
And I'm just looking forward to see how everybody executes and enjoy playing the game. Just enjoy yourself. You never know if you can ever come back and play again. So enjoy this experience. Have a good time. It's already been filmed. Now you can enjoy watching it with your family and friends. We've already said who we think may win, might win, possibly could win. Um, if Randy picks you, I, I feel for you. But anyway, enjoy. I'm I'm confident. Yeah, this cast looks absolutely incredible. I think it's the perfect time for me to get back into my love for the amazing race. It comes on right after Survivor. So you get an hour and a half of Survivor from um, 8 to 9.30. And then you get an hour and a half of The Amazing Race, 9.30 to 11. You cannot beat that. That is back to back. Um, and I cannot wait to watch The Amazing Race, especially with the hour and a half episodes this year. We will be doing a an Amazing Race fantasy competition through our partners at bracketology so make sure to jump in on that you never know what we might have up our sleeve i don't believe there's going to be any prizes for the amazing race but there will be prizes for our survivor uh fantasy competition but make sure to get in both and enjoy playing both uh if you enjoyed the video today go ahead and hit that like button subscribe to the channel Share this with all of your reality TV friends as we continue to help this channel grow, much like we did Survivor Now. This is just Survivor Now's sister channel where you will be able to see coverage of The Amazing Race, Big Brother, The Challenge, any other show we do moving forward. Uh, Abraham, anything else to say before we sign off today? Look, we're about to hit the fall runs, and we're about to put these reality shows back into play. Let's get on out there and have some fun. Enjoy ourselves. Back to back, to back to back to back to back to back podcast. 90 minutes. Forget. Also, 90 don't minutes. forget to check us out on social media, on Instagram, at This Is Reality, and follow our new Twitch account, Reality Now Podcast. Until next time, guys, Amazing Race and Survivor are right around the turn, and Abraham and I will be here to bring you all the coverage. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we will see you guys next time.